Hexclad has revolutionized the cookware industry with a hybrid pan that gives you all the convenience and cleanup of nonstick, the versatility of your grandma's cast iron, and they're so durable, okay? They literally last a lifetime. I'm serious. They have a lifetime warranty just in case you can't find a way to destroy them while making your hinge dates ramen noodles, all right? And look, we love it. These things are dishwasher safe and Chia still makes me hand wash them because she thinks I'm gonna mess it up, all right? Gordon Ramsay might be the toughest critic in the entire world and these are the pots and pans that he uses both at home and in his Michelin star restaurants, okay? Hexclad products also come with a lifetime warranty. That's right, these are literally the last set of pots and pans you will ever have to buy. And for a limited time only, our listeners get 10% off their entire order with the code DUDES at hexclad.com. Support our show and check them out at hexclad.com and use the code DUDES. Oh, laughs. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. You, as if you only have one kid. <laughs> hey, 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 look. <laughs> David, so why are you laughing? Tell the people why you're laughing. Because anytime I know he wants to show me a, a, a picture of his child, I know it's not going to be the boy. <laughs> it's he like, doesn't do anything yet. <laughs> like, you want to see the cutest picture of my kid? I was like, you have two kids, man. <laughs> You have two. <laughs> he just started smiling like a couple weeks ago, all right? It's about to get really cute. He is freaking adorable. He's a handsome little boy. He's so cute. He's so chill. Yeah. And he like coos too, like a little baby. Dude, my dad said the fucking sweetest thing to me the other day, dog. He came to kick it. Uh, Veda had gone to Ikea with Chia and it was just me and Q chilling. And um, my dad came through and he was just hanging out for a bit. And so I'm changing Q's diaper. And, you know, at first my dad's like, yeah, you're, a, you're a good dad, Tim. And I was like, thanks. Because oh. he said that before. I'm like, thanks, dad. But then he was like, and I was like, you too. He's like, but I, I couldn't do half the things you do as a dad. I was like, what? What do you mean? Feed you. <laughs> touch you. Nurture you. <laughs> you know. Acknowledge your existence. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what do you mean, dad? He's like, well, you know, you just, he's like, you're 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 so patient, you know. And he, he's like, and, and you're, you're such a positive person. And, and he's like, it's good for like fatherhood. And I'm like, well, thanks, Dad. Because like, well, what did you do? Yeah, because I don't remember him ever being, like, I don't remember my dad ever popping off on me. Like, mm. you could tell, I could tell when he was angry, but he never like yelled, yelled at me. Oh, right? here comes Tim's perfect life again. <laughs> Please continue. I got whooped, all right, up till when I was like six. But me too. So but my, I was that was I was thirty two. Sixteen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thirty two. That was the last time my dad hit me. Well, here's, here's what's funny is my dad goes, <laughs> I'm like, Dad, you know, I just I try to keep it positive, you know, because like life is short, right? He's like, Yeah, I've lived long enough. I can be negative. <laughs> <laughs> Ty smile, more like Ty frown. <laughs> That's still my favorite Yelp review of all time, dude. <laughs> Ty. Ty scowl, dude. Ty scowl. Was that it? Something like that. That's so fucking funny, dude. Ah, uh, Yelp. I'm not angry. This is just my face. <laughs> I have resting angry face. <laughs> Whoa, he's, he's actually acknowledging you as a father at such an early age of, you know, for you. Yeah. I mean, I just, uh, he's just kind of watching me change the poopy diaper and was like, hey, you're a good dad. I was like, well, thanks, man. Yeah, let me tell you something. This is what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I know you can relate because you're, you've already had your wedding festivities. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm having a very small wedding. It's it's not going to be crazy. It's literally tiny as shit. 70 people. It's honestly probably not going to be that fun. <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be great. It's just for the festivities. Mm -hmm. um, but did you have to deal with your parents being really annoying? Glory to God. Um, I told my parents that well, this was their idea. I, I'll tell you why I didn't have to deal with them being annoying, okay? Initially, I was like, hey, dad, I'm going to give you 20 spots in my invite list to invite your homies. 20 out of 200 is a lot, okay? He's like, that's it? How are we supposed to decide? I'm like, 
What you think? That's why, exactly. <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> what, you, what are you saying, yeah. right? I'm like, what, what are you talking about, Dad? Um, And then we had a little, like, I was like, what, 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 what? And then he came back and was like, I talked to your mom. You don't have to invite any of our friends. We're going to have a separate Thai wedding. I was like, lit. Thank you. So Perfect. we handled everything the way we wanted to. We invited all our people. Didn't have to worry about fucking a bunch of Thai people I hadn't seen since I was three years old. You know what I'm saying? And so they had their own Thai wedding that they organized. And I ended up paying for, of course. But <laughs> Hold on a second. That's hella funny, actually. Uh, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just going to do this wedding and then you pay for it. Well, here's here's what's funny. <laughs> how does that help? <laughs> here's what's funny, dog. Without getting into specifics of how much the, the second wedding cost, my dad's like, oh, don't worry. When Thai people give presents, presents for a wedding, you're going to get so much money in the envelopes. I was like, great. So I fucking, we actually made a lot of money in the little envelopes. He's like, Okay, and just so you know, the the wedding cost us uh, this much. <laughs> I ended up breaking even, dog, from wow. the envelopes and how much I paid for the separate tie wedding. Wow. So I say all that to say, no, I did not have to deal with them because we had two weddings. Uh, but you have a different story, I'm well, assuming. It's like this. Like, <laughs> what I dislike is I wish my mom <laughs> would have just been annoying up front. Aha. Because then I could have dealt with it then. Yeah. You know, but up until this whole point, she knows this is a 70 person wedding, which means literally a handful of my friends are going to be there. Mm. Handful. And I did it based on people I see the most and yeah. also convenience. And you got family coming as well? Uh, I don't have that. It's mainly all Mariel's family. Okay. So I really don't have that many people. Yeah. So. And for those of y'all who haven't had a wedding, 70 or even 200 sounds like a lot. But you got to remember that's. Half for the wife, half for you. So really, that breaks it down to 35 for you, dog. Yeah. That's not a lot at all. Yeah, and I didn't get the 35. I got like 25. So. And then, <laughs> motherfuckers want to bring plus ones. They got exactly. couples. They're married. That brings your list from 35 to like 15, exactly. 20. Yeah. That, it's like nothing. Yeah. So, you know, I'm doing this whole, whole thing, and I told her, like, look, this is what it is, and, like, kids can't come because— And most of my friends, too, they don't want their fucking kids there because, like, this is my time to have fun. Don't even invite my fucking kids. Right. You know, other people are like, nah, I can't sit. But my friends were like, the Sacramento friends that are be, there's only a few. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't bring your kids. Yeah. Like, they're like, fuck them kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not fucking bringing my kids. This is, like, the one time I get to come out and have fun. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to your wedding. I'm going to drink up. And the next day, I'm going to go to Disneyland. I'm going to do all this other shit. <laughs> so I'm not bringing my fucking kids. Yeah. So I was like, oh, great. And so, you know, I get a call from my cousin. And he was like, oh, so I just talked to your mom. And she says, you know, I could bring the kids. Mm. I'm like, <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me call you back real quick. And I called my mom. I was like, so what's this thing of you just inviting a bunch of children to the wedding? She goes, they can't come? I was like, I literally told you there's no kids at the wedding. And you said you don't care as long as you and our dad are – that's it. Yeah. So why the fuck would you invite like seven new people? Yeah. Where do you think she goes? I'll pay for it. There's no space. Yeah. It's not a money thing. Yeah. The venue is made for 70 people. You know, a lot of people don't realize how weddings work, and I didn't know until the homies started getting married, right? Um, I didn't know that, you know, I had to RS— Like, the first wedding, the first grown person wedding I got invited to, I didn't RSVP for a long time because I was like— I was treating it like a club invite. You oh, feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go, oh, yeah, I'll go through. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll pull up. I'll, yeah, I'm, I'm going to bring my homegirl, whatever, right? Yeah. But then it's like, oh, you don't realize, oh, you RSVP because you have a— plate of food with your name on it. You have a specific seat at the table with your name on it. People need to know what the fuck's going on, right? So, you know, I didn't, I, I was like, I, I think a lot of people that haven't been to weddings, for one, they think like, oh, I'll just bring my kids. Yeah. Or also if they're younger, they think, oh yeah, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just come with my homegirl. That's cool, right? Because they don't know how this shit works. It's like, you got to pay for that shit too. And then we have to set it up on the, like the whole seating arrangement mm -hmm. shit. And so it's like, it's it's a lot more complicated. <laughs> Yo, shout, out, shout out to Dumb at your wedding, though. You know? <laughs> I was, thank you for, I was just about to bring that up. <laughs> this fool dumbfounded, pulled up with some woman I've never seen in my entire life. <laughs> you want to know something fucking funny? <laughs> so like, when you, when you know somebody for X amount of years, right? Yeah. You already know what they're going to do. Now, you told me about that information <laughs> after, right? But I remember sitting there and I see this ghostly looking Asian woman just float in. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I looked at Bart. I was like, how much you want to bet that's Dumb's date? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it turned out to be Dumb's. So like, funny. Because she looks super artsy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a little fucking. A little bulk, Korean pixie doll. A little pixie doll. A little fucking bowl cut. Fucking little cat eyes. I was like, uh, I'll bet you a million dollars that's Dumb's date right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was. And I don't know how, but they found her a seat. She was able to eat dinner, all that shit. You like, made it happen. We made it happen. Glory to God. Hey, man, look, the universe was... Uh... You want to hear something fucking funny? I, I, we were talking to our, our food dude, right? Yeah. And I was like, hey, on the off chance that uh, <laughs> m our Asian parents pull some Asian shit, he goes, listen, we already know. We have all the meals set, and then we cook four extra ones just in case Perfect. somebody starts some shit, and they're like, last minute they want to change. We always do four or five extra stuff, because mm. there's always parents that just go, I don't like this. Mm. I'm like, I like you, so we're good. He goes, yes. we got you. Don't even worry about it. Let me ask you this, dog. How are your parents when you eat at public restaurants with them? It depends. So, like, my parents are actually pretty reserved and shy. Mm -hmm. So one of the things too, my parents actually don't go out to eat a lot. Yeah. So one, I think my dad actually has like crazy social anxiety. So mm. he gets nervous ordering things. He doesn't know what the fuck it is. Mm. And so he just won't, he'll just be like, you order, you order. I was mm. like, I don't know what you like. So now I just order everything for them. Yeah, 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 and yeah. then my mom doesn't speak any English. So she mm. waits for me to order everything else too. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always been like, unless we go to a Korean restaurant. Mm, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my mom's done ever since I was a little kid. Uh, now, we also didn't eat out much. If we ate out, it was like a special occasion. Yep. Okay. That being said, I kind of understand where my mom is coming from with this, but it's also still very annoying. Okay. Even more so now that I've worked at a restaurant for some years. Uh, when we would go to a restaurant, you know, table for three, whatever, whatever, the, the host would take us to a table and my mom would go. <laughs> I love she, would, that face. she would put on her disapproving face. Can we get a can we get a table by the window? Oh, okay, okay. Server will take us to a place by the window. Uh, can you can we get a can we get one by the blah blah blah? Like every time we've gone to eat at a restaurant when I was younger, we the, the hostess would have to take us like three different tables before we actually sat down. You definitely had spit in your food quite a few <laughs> times. A hundred percent you did. <laughs> it was like guaranteed, bro. And Especially now after working at a, at a restaurant and understanding there's like a seating thing that the hostess has to follow. You know, there's only a certain amount of servers per section. Like there's a system, right? I try to be very like, ah, come on, mom. I mean, in her mind, she's like, yo, we barely go out. If I'm paying for this table, I want to sit somewhere that I want to sit, right? I get it. But at the same time, I'm like, can you relax? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's so funny because usually like Asian people don't do that, right? Because mm -hmm. they don't want to like stir shit up. Yeah. So the fact that your mom's doing that is actually pretty fucking hilarious. I've never seen Asian people do that shit. It's what she do, dog. My, mom, my mom's different, bro. <laughs> your mom is fucking funny. Like I said, I will always, <laughs> I wish I could just have that as my screensaver. Your mom is doing <laughs> fucking, fucking, fucking squaring up on you, dog. <laughs> uh, uh, previous episode didn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So, uh, Okay, so when you when you would go, what would you say is your Korean mom's favorite not Korean restaurant? In and out. Really? My mom craves In and Out like a motherfucker. How dude. interesting! I, I ate. If we ever had fast food, it was majority of the time. If it was a burger, it was In and Out. Really? She loves In and Out like a motherfucker, dude. Hmm. She loves the fries. She loves the double. She always gets the same shit: double double fries and a, and a soda. That's beautiful. She. That's the most American thing that she eats. Wow. So she craves def she actually her second favorite food, I think comparatively it's either it's either Vietnamese food or it's Thai food. Yes. She fucking loves Thai food. Hell yeah. So whenever she goes, she goes, I want she goes, order me all because she I think she likes like the explosion of flavors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she, it's so different from any other Asian food that she has. Mm -hmm. So she'll crave. So every time I go back to Sacramento, she wants me to take her to a Thai spot. Thai. But she needs to eat Thai food in, uh, over here in LA because it's just different. <laughs> yeah, Thai Town, Thai Town got some popping spots, bro. I that's what I was going to do and I forgot. Take her to Thai Town? Yeah, well, that too. And I, I you know that dessert spot in Thai Town? Uh, it's next to like crispy pork gang. It's like in a little plaza. No. Okay. Well, they have a bunch of shit. I don't know what the fuck it is. Oh, oh. So oh. I was just gonna order everything and have you tell me what it is. Oh, okay. Well, here's here's where that would have not worked out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's because as far as Thai desserts go, I'm very familiar with them. 
I don't know what none of them shits are called, though. Oh. For me, it's always like, oh, the, the, the g- gelatinous shit that has the little coconut uh, flavoring like to it. It's like Korean desserts. Too. Yeah, I just, I never knew what they were actually called growing up. My mom would make them shits. There's this crazy, there's this one dessert. It's like um, a, a bunch of little gelatin variations, but to get like a special uh, fragrance to it, it's crazy. My mom used to make it when I was little. She would get like a bucket and put all the shit in there and then she would light a little thing on fire uh, and close it to get the, like the essence. Yeah, Yeah. like that. It's a very specific smoke flavor. It's not even a smoky flavor. It's crazy, man. I used to see her making it all the time. I still don't know what it's called. Um, Your mom's a sorceress, dude. (laughs) I don't think that was food she was making. It's witchcraft. Yeah, she's cursing my dad. Have you had this thing where... (laughs) (laughs) Your dad starts coughing in the back. <laughs> uh, I know what you're doing in there. <laughs> Still alive. <laughs> it was like this little coconut thing. It was like a half circle. And it was fried. It was like it looked like a pancake almost. Mm, yes. Like, bro, what the fuck was that? So and it's mushy. Yes. Yeah. Dog, I obliterated. Aren't they that so shit. good? They one of the best things I've ever had. Yeah. And uh, it was me, Mariel, and her best friend, and we just I wanted to take in there because every time I went there, there's like a couple of Thai people that I know that are like chef people, chefy mm-hmm. people. And they always order stuff, but they don't tell me what it is. And I just <laughs> eat it. Yeah. So I just couldn't remember what the fuck it was. Man. And I just, I remember I was like, I remember that was good. And I hadn't eaten like in years. Ate it. Blew my fucking mind. <laughs> I don't know what that shit's called, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Kind of like fried Coconutty, squishy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, anybody who's Thai out there, tell me what it's called. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> do you fuck with uh, liver? I do. I eat liver specifically like in soups. Mm. But you know, like when they, uh, like the American style where they fucking saute it in a pan with onions. Liver and, shit? and onions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. You know what, man? I, I, my, my mom kind of, uh, I think, so growing up in the restaurant at Thai Smile for, you know, we had Thai Smile for 20 years. Um, Originally, Thai scowl, Thai scowl, Thai cry, <laughs> Thai depressed. <laughs> I, uh, you know, of course, as a younger lad, um, I was sticking to the basics, you know, pot Thai, fried rice all the time. And then um, I really began to explore the whole menu, um, like Thai shit that even my mom had never even really ordered for me. And uh, there's a version of it's like lap, but they use liver um, instead sliced up liver. Oh. It's called tap wan, Ooh. which means sweet liver. <laughs> tap wan. Tap wan. And um, it's that, but with lap flavors. And, uh, you know, I kind of developed a, a taste for liver. And, you know, if you order the real boat noodles um, with all the fucking shit in there, the the tripe, the the fatty parts of the beef, and the liver, pop I do boat noodles, but I always take out the tripe. Oh, man. I can't do tripe, man. <laughs> I can't do it. It looks so fucking gross. <laughs> it has a weird texture. Let me tell you something about that shit. <laughs> My mom would always feed that shit to me every winter because yeah, we would yeah. have a soup called komtang. Uh-huh. Komtang is like a marrow soup. Uh-huh. It's just boiled over high heat. Sounds delicious. And so the fat emulsifies, so it looks like tonkotsu broth, like, you know, like mm. in the Japanese. You know. And it just tastes like just just bones and fucking marrow. Mm-hmm. And then there would be a shit ton of tripe in there. <laughs> thick honeycomb tripe. <laughs> Every fucking year. I kid you, I'm not even exaggerating. Yeah. My mom puts this fucking bowl in front of me and she goes, eat it. <laughs> and I go, mom, you know I can't eat this stuff. She goes, it's, it's, Korean people always say, the, the pisango bonju bolla. You don't know what expensive things are. Pisango bonju bolla. Bonju bolla. Bonju bolla. Not as close enough. That's pretty good though. <laughs> It's like, you don't know what expensive, the good things are, expensive things are. Okay. And so I would eat it and immediately I throw up. (laughs) Every fucking winter, eat it and I go, (laughs) and I would throw up. She just goes, get the fuck out of my kitchen. Oh my God. And then the next year she would forget again. That happened for almost 10 years. Well, I want to taste your mom's (laughs) Gucci (laughs) Bombujula. I tell you. One day, okay? Have me over for a dinner. I'm gonna eat your mom's coochie bum jubala. And then <laughs> it didn't sound anything like that. And you just wanted to say it. <laughs> you stupid idiot. <laughs> we'll be right uh. back after these commercial messages. <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by Hex 
clad. Listen, if you're there at home cooking up your food in your torn up Teflon, uh, what do you call it? Those things called pots and pans, which really isn't because they're just tore up because you're just scraping them up all day, making your, your burnt eggs. Guess what? With hex clad, that's not a problem because it got the text and the slippery feels of a nonstick pan, but super durable like stainless steel, my friends. And that's why I love my hex clad. I be walking things up because I'm an Asian man. I only cook in a wok. I boil things in a wok. I saute things in a wok. I uh, fry things in a wok and I do it with my hex clad wok as well and i got a whole bunch of stuff from them my whole kitchen is hex clad because gordon ramsay called me a donut for not doing it correctly so i got myself a set of hex clads so for a limited time only our listeners get 10 percent off their entire order with the code dudes at hexclad.com support our show and check them out at hexclad.com and use the code dudes <laughs> you're, a, you're a bastard. Speaking of dirty dinners, um, I randomly thought of this story the other day, and I realized I, I don't think I've shared this on either one of my podcasts ever. So um, there was uh, one time I was in Vegas, okay? And, um, and there was a very pretty Asian girl with a bunch of tattoos in the elevator. And I remember thinking, wow, this girl's hot, right? Um, I got out of the elevator and I wasn't sure. And she was kind of looking and, you know, at, at, at a certain point during the like YouTube whole stage, I couldn't tell if people were like checking me out or if they were just fans of the videos, right? But um, I tweeted, I was like, man, it was hot ass girl in Vegas, <laughs> tattoos I just saw. And then thinking like oh man i just gonna tweet about this girl right and she fucking was a follower or like if someone like was like hey that was me i was like oh shit so like me and this girl started just talking in the dms and shit texting and then one day uh she came through for the smash and i remember being it was very it was very like dope because um uh you know she came through but i think we were joking about like yo she come through and like uh uh, like just a coat and like lingerie, right? And I thought we we're joking, but then she pulled, came to my house, my, you know, my parents' house. <laughs> but I came to the door in a fucking coat, lingerie underneath, lit, super hot. But she had to change the clothes, okay? So I share that story. Now, I mind you, I totally forgot you about this. You live in a fucking porno? <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, the whole stage was very porno, okay? It was a lot of porno times. But I say all that to say, my parents, so fucking Asian, even if it was like a random smash, they'd be like, does she want food? <laughs> so this girl, me and her, are in my room hanging Sex out. Sex burns a lot of calories. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's like, "You can I get seconds or what? You, you gonna you gonna pass it down or what?" You know, my favorite thing <laughs> is leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> so my parents hear me hanging out with this girl upstairs. My mom's like, "Well, I made food. Does she want any food?" Now me being like, "Oh God, all right." My mom wants to know if you want food. Not thinking at all this girl would See, come down to have dinner after we just like randomly smashed, right? She's like, what did you make? <laughs> and it was like fucking like fried fish with my mom's like sauce and shit. She's like, yeah. She comes down, bro. Sits at the table. Now, she's not in the trench coat anymore. She's in regular clothes because she bought like a change of clothes. Smart. Smashing this food, bro. Eating so much. Fucking the soup, the rice, the fish. Tearing it up. Like, mm, oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> Tearing it up. And my, got a foot up. Like the cartoon. She takes the fish in her mouth like this. <laughs> Sucks the whole thing up. <laughs> Yeah, bro, like tearing it up. And of course, my mom, who's like, whose love language is like feeding She's people, in love with her. she fucking is like so happy that this random girl I just smashed is like loving her soup, you know? And um, and I don't think I ever really even hung out with her after that. Not because she was lame, but you know, it's just, just like, so what happened to the girl? What happened to what's her name? <laughs> even now, she goes, you know, she is great. <laughs> But no girl has eaten my soup like that girl. But you remember the girl <laughs> that put the foot on the table. <laughs> it's like, where is lingerie trench coat girl? <laughs> 
But yeah, man, I like I kind of blocked that story out of my head until a couple of days ago. I've that's unheard of. Isn't that crazy? That's she must have been starving, dude. I think she just really well that and well you know we worked up a little appetite, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but also I think she just really loved food and um once I told her, yo, I got dinner. If you want it, she was like, fuck yeah. <gasps> I'm famished. <laughs> she couldn't wait. You guys were fucking, she just. Or she was one of those that was like, uh, I thought you were going to take me to dinner before we did anything. <laughs> I was like, no. Oh, what what? You, where did you meet this girl? Vegas. Oh. Yeah. How random. Very, very random. Uh, it's kind of. You're a bold man. You just bring some random, random lady uh, to your parents' home. Oh, bro. Whole stage, Tim. It was randoms all the time. Wow. Yeah. And your parents knew what was going on up there. Yeah, yeah. As long as I didn't get it. My dad was just like, don't get anyone pregnant, you know? Damn, you got cool parents, dude. Thai people, when it comes to sexual things, are just kind of like whatever about it, you know? That's crazy. Yeah. That knocks you know what your mom likes, right? (laughs) (laughs) Let me teach you how to do it. But that's like, (laughs) that's like, so I heard you in there. You got to try this position out. <laughs> <I know>. oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn, yeah. that's crazy. Thai people have always, uh, you know, as far as like, and I'm, uh, my experience when I speak of Thai people, like I'm sure there's more um, prudish Thai people yeah. and people that aren't as like free thinking about this. But as far as my experience goes with Thai people and Thai culture, um, it's always been very like, casual and almost like joking about sex you feel me like my parents always joked about that shit all my dad's friends like people always ask me like how do your parents feel when you were making all these sexual jokes i'm like where do y'all think i got this shit from you know (laughs) because my dad's jokes dude. yeah seriously because when i was um like even a little kid all i would hear is my dad's friends joking about like just dicks and pusses all the time you know (sighs) all the time and uh, you go to thailand and um hey who's horny or japanese people or thai people huh i think Thai people, outwardly horny. Mm-mm. Japanese people, very horny, ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> but ashamed of where their horniness takes them. I'm so horny, but I'm a shy. <laughs> <laughs> I and, want to fuck, but I can't. <laughs> and then they get to Thailand, I'm like, and they're like, you so good dick like I so good dick. <laughs> Yo, did you see that uh, video clip of the Japanese dude that went to a concert? It was like, it was like some type of, I don't, I'm, I'm fucking up the, the 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 genre, but it's like reggaeton type of shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dance hall. Yes, yeah, dance oh, hall. Oh, and he starts uh, super uh, fucking going hard, humping yeah, that girl. Yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah. I was, he was so sh- That's the exact example of what you're talking about. Because where are you from? I'm from Japan. <laughs> oh, I, like to, I like to dance. Yeah. And then he goes off, and then I think he sprains his ankle too. <laughs> So that in dance hall culture is called uh, daggering when you hump somebody like that. that uh, does the people's balls not hurt when they do that? You're not really humping with your balls. You're, you're like hitting it with the, like more like the, your hip bone, like, the, like your um, pelvic bone. But the motion though, pock, pock. No, nah, not really. <sighs> I'm really bad at bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exposing myself too much. I mean, just in terms of like, because I would do that shit at the club sometimes, just fucking around. Like, it's, it's always fun when you have somebody that, that knows that's how you're going to be dancing. Yeah. Because like, you know, you start you start the, the regular grinding, but then like as you like get into it, like and you grab the hips and you do like a pa pa type shit real hard because it's funny. I've never, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't I don't have the, uh, the riz for it. <laughs> I don't have the riz for it. Steve's. <laughs> you uh, just Robin Couch, would you let a guy do the uh the doggering to you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's a guy you really like and you guys had rapport? I it's so it's so hard to say because like if I <laughs> this is gonna sound about if I really like somebody, he can do a lot. But um <laughs> I don't know. I I've never been confused. I'm gonna paint the scenario for you, right? Okay. So you're in the club. Oh. The no. dance hall music is going. Never. There is a man, sexy as hell. You guys look into each other's fucking pupils. His dreads flowing. He goes, <laughs> locks. Locks. I'm sorry. His <laughs> beautiful locks are going. Just everywhere. It looks like the Matrix when they were dancing in the <laughs> <laughs> And he goes, White chocolate item gas. <laughs> You want me to dagger that ting behind you? <laughs> you gonna let you gonna let him? Yes or no? 
No, a stranger, no. If it was like a joke with somebody I was like in a relationship with, like maybe, but a stranger, definitely not. Okay, well, now, now you have Molly in you. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't give proper consent. Ah, oh, that's right. Well, here, here's, the, here's the thing, right? It, if you're somebody, because it's very much a cultural thing, you feel me? Like dancing like that. I can do Like it. if you're somebody who really like fucks with dance hall music and is around people that like dance like that, it's almost... It almost isn't even sexual. You know, what everybody's saying? doing it. It's just kind of like a, it's a dance move. You know, it's like it's something. Have you seen the crazy videos from Jamaica where people are like jumping <laughs> off tables and like uh, and, and, and doing that type of shit? Literally, I saw a guy do that daggering thing, but he they stacked two tables up. Mm -hmm. He was oh, and he jumped and he basically WWE slapped this yeah. girl and with her legs open like this. Yeah, that bro. is crazy. So that shit's crazy, right? But. Um, and I'm not trying to say like everybody dances like that, but it's just kind of like a part of the culture, you know? And so when I would go, now mind you, like, um, yeah, like one of my best friends growing up was Jamaican, but uh, this was like my preschool homie. We weren't going to like parties like that. Yeah, yeah. But just going to like <laughs> clubs um, where like it was a hip hop dance hall room and um, just like knowing different people. It's just, you know, grinding is just kind of like a part of dancing and then. Uh, the See, da grinding, the daggering shit was just fun. <laughs> grinding, I understand. That just happens. <laughs> the daggering is insane. I think the way the Japanese dude did, <laughs> dude did it was a little. He went from zero to hundred. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> zero to a thousand. Dude. <laughs> that fool fulfilled his life. I think he was like a Make a Wish Foundation kid, <laughs> and he fulfilled his dying wish. <laughs> he looked like he was in heaven. Yeah, like euphoria. He goes, this is what I always want. <laughs> <laughs> and he just went at it. Well, you know, there's like a huge dance hall like community in Japan. Really? Yeah. Like it's really big out there. Like where like all these Japanese people are, um, you know, they wear fucking Jamaican colors all the time and their hair is locked up. And Japanese people do. They have a cholo community out there, too. Yeah. Yeah. And there's one in like Thailand that I saw clips of. too. What the fuck is that about? It's crazy. And they know. legit look like cholos. Yeah. If he didn't open his mouth and be going, what's up? I'm a cholo. <laughs> I, I would have never known. There's a guy on Instagram that's popular. He teaches people how to be a cholo, but he's Japanese. Really? Yeah. He goes, style. <laughs> Pants. <laughs> Mustache. Cortez. <laughs> Cortez. <laughs> and he teaches people how to like do like cholo things, but it's like it's like a very unique subset. I was hoping I would see like a cholo out there when I was in Japan. Mm. I didn't see him, but I guess like a small group. Yeah, bro. I don't know where you got to go in Japan, but there's like a huge community, like dance hall community out there where there's like you know dance hall clubs and um, they're they're dancing like that. You know. When's the last time you danced with Chia? Like that. Oh, last time I like danced with you where we actually grinded a little bit, probably at her friend's wedding in Canada a couple of years ago. <laughs> oh, I'm mean, because they have kids and stuff now. It's different. Yeah, yeah. we haven't been anywhere uh, where there's music. We don't dance anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Baby shark. Do, 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 do. Now, the, the most dancing I've been doing is uh, Veda loves this video called Oopsie Doopsie, <laughs> where it's like a bunch of zombies and like little like uh, cartoon zombies and skeletons dancing around. And it's like it's like a boom -tip, boom -tip, oopsie doopsie. And we've been just dancing around in circles. Dude, it's, it's <laughs> actually kind of hard. <laughs> That's hilarious, by the way. <laughs> Upset, it, dumps it. <laughs> That's fucking catchy. I, it, I already got caught. But it's actually pretty hard to make catchy, like, children's music. I've seen quite a few people try to do children's music, and I'm yeah. like, it's good, but it's not catchy. Yeah. Like, what's what's this fucking thing missing? Yeah. Like, what's the, what's the baby shark formula? What's the oops it, doops it? You know what's crazy is um, baby shark has been around for... A long, long time. I only found out recently. Yeah. How come I never heard it as a kid? I, yeah, me neither. But when I was with my ex, which was 15 or so years ago, 14, 15 years ago, she, when she went to camp, she learned that song. And she would sing it randomly. Baby shark, do, 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 do. And that's where I first heard it. What is, I, I really want to figure out the formula to make a popping kid song. Because like, People who are inclined to do music, they try to do it. And I'm like, this is good, but it's not sticking in my head. I know. Like Baby Shark stuck in my head. Even that oopsie doopsie with the way you said it, that's going to stick in my head. I, um, <laughs> so I have, for the past like two weeks, I've been waking up singing one of Veda's favorite videos. It's this Halloween song. 
Um, and it's like, uh, well, I forgot it now, but, <laughs> but the shit's been, and, and it might be because the kids, they hear it and they want to sing it. They want to watch it over and over and over again. But yeah, man, uh, there's a lot of money in that baby shark, bro. I know you did the, the, the song for Veda. But that's more for adults. Yeah, and no one, and that's not stuck in anyone's head because the views are only at 70,000 views and like, it's pretty trash <laughs> views it's, it's as far as one of my music videos goes. <laughs> like, oh, this guy's a kid. Who cares? Yeah, man? no one gives a shit about that. Have you ever thought about doing a child song? Um, yeah, uh, and I'll tell you about it right after this break. How do you heal? Is there a rule book? Is there one particular way to do it right? I don't know. But what I do know is acknowledging that we need to heal is the first step. We often find ourselves dwelling on who or what hurt us or triggered us. But a special thing happens when we realize that how we treat ourselves means so much more than any outside energy ever could. That's when the healing begins. Spend some time with yourself doing the things you love, the things that genuinely make you happy. Make peace with your past, forgive yourself, and try your best to let it go. And you'd be surprised how helpful some deep breaths can be. Maybe even let out a scream or two if you need to. Bro, you can even cry. I ain't gonna tell nobody, I promise. <laughs> Whatever you need to do to get back to being you. So tell me, how do you heal? Me and Conceited from Wild and Out, we put out a couple of little kids videos uh, with puppets. Um, but was it like a song though? No, it was just like we got we did like kind of hipper versions of ABCs and we did like a, a eyes and ears type song. Um, and the little kids that have seen it, like the like you know, they enjoy the videos, but I, I wouldn't say it's one of those things that gets like stuck in your head, you know? That's what you gotta figure out. Not like whoopsie doopsie, ding 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 ding. That's already catchy as shit. <laughs> like what the fuck? That's already catchy as shit. Oh, there it goes. It's Halloween night, not a soul in sight. That's one of the things that's uh, stuck in my head. That sounds great too. Is it the same formula as a commercial jingle, you think? Shit, probably, bro. Let me tell you. Oh, Robin Couch, thank you for bringing this up because nothing has made me want a Whopper more than BK, have it your way. That shit has been in my head for the past like two months. And like every day I'm like, Maybe we should order Whoppers today, babe, because that fucking Burger King jingle has been in my head, dog. When was the last time you ate fucking Burger King, dude? <sighs> Probably. I heard, I heard they're struggling, dude. Are they? Yeah, I heard they're struggling. And that's fucked up because, you know, Burger King's, like, tasty when you get a good batch. Burger King was the antithesis to McDonald's. It's like, hey, if you want to get that cheap fast shit, go to McDonald's. If you want a legit burger, you go to fucking Burger King. Because it's that flame broiled that adds a little something something to it, right? But then their burgers got smaller. And they got a little shittier. Whoppers are still pretty girthy. Um, and I I bite into a Whopper and I do like it. But to be honest, he, I think here's where it fucks up, right? Because if I was to choose between Burger King and Carl's Jr., I'm choosing Carl's Jr. Because they're both flame broiled. But uh, I don't know. I think Carl's Jr. just tastes better. Uh, I me. never eat at Carl's Jr. Your whole life? No, I, I, I've eaten there. Oh. <laughs> Yo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like shook. <laughs> you idiot! <laughs> I mean, oh my God, I didn't know I hit such a sore spot. I, boy, I love when I was on my fast food zip. Man, Carl's Jr. was my shit. Okay, so Carl's Jr., I ate there a lot back in the day when they yeah. used to have the $6 burger that wasn't $6. Bam! It was like four bucks. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the whole marketing ploy behind that is like, have you ever gone to a, fast, a fancy restaurant and you ordered a $6 burger? Yeah. But over here, it's the same shit, but it's four bucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, now their $6 burger is like 12 bucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I know. You know, inflation and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they didn't really think that uh, all the way through. Mm -hmm. But they just don't have anything on their menu that I crave. Like McDonald's has chicken McNuggets. Yeah. They have the soft serve. They have filet o fish and they have the breakfast sandwiches for me. Yeah. Right? Burger King, I actually like Burger King's French fries a lot. Okay. Their French fries are fucking delicious. Chicken fries aren't bad either, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chicken fries are halfway decent. Carl's Jr. has the crisp cut fries, right? Yeah, dude. So that's good. And then um, Jack in the Box has the curly fries, mm. which is pretty hard to defeat with that and ranch. Have you had the 
um, the butter burger from Jack in the Box? No. Dog. I always get the double Western bacon cheeseburger. That's Carl's Jr. No, that's um, Jack in the Box. They have the uh, the their Western burger. It has like extra bacon, two patties, oh, two cheeses. Maybe you're right. Mayo. It's literally the worst thing for you on the menu. Yeah. And it has fried onion rings in there. Yes. Um, Carl's Jr. has a similar burger. Very delicious. Jack in the Box. Have you had the Jack in the Box tacos? Yes. Those are all. I mean, it's two tacos for a for fucking ninety nine cents. Yes, but they're amazing. They're they're amazing. Jack in the Box <laughs> always gave me diarrhea though. Mm, Taco Bell never did. I don't understand the Taco Bell diarrhea reference. Like I've never had diarrhea from Taco Bell. I defend Taco Bell like I'm defending my family. When people <laughs> say when when I say I've had Taco Bell and people are like, oh, you're gonna be running to the toilet. I'm like, you have a weak bitch made. <laughs> <laughs> Mark ass, buster ass stomach. If ground beef and cheese and a tortilla gives you diarrhea. I hate when people do that thing where they go to Taco Bell, they're workers, yeah. and they show you how it's made. I'm like, please don't do this. Yeah, who the fuck cares? I don't I don't want to see this. Like I just want to eat it. <laughs> I I see those and I'm like, duh. <laughs> where they, they cut the meat out of a plastic bag and they squeeze it out. <laughs> yeah. I'm like well, I don't need to see this. I just want to know it tastes good. Someone sent me a TikTok of how they make the McRib, where it was like, you know, a frozen thing, <clears> and they put it in the thing, and then they drench it in the sauce or whatever. They're like, you still want the McRib? I'm like, yeah. obviously, are you stupid? Like, who thought McDonald's is making fresh <laughs> like, fucking, like, like let the let the fresh ribs on the grill marinate what, what, in the sauce? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck are you revealing here? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you thought it was a chef making that shit every time it came out? Yeah, exactly. No, what the fuck are you talking about? So Excuse like, me. It's <laughs> 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 Would you like one rib, please? <laughs> <laughs> no. Let me get one rib. Have you seen that? Oh, that's so fucking funny, <laughs> dude. That, that shit, see, comedy like that I very much enjoy because it's actually very fucking relatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, if you, if you worked anywhere where there was, like, some hood-ass motherfuckers there, there was always a person like that. <laughs> just, just fucking making your life hella complicated. Just fucking shit up. <laughs> I used to work that, at this fish and chip spot. Yeah. You did? <laughs> yeah. It was because, you know, like, you know, Asian people, we have community. So mm. uh, if my parents' friends needed some people to work there, I would just go and cover shifts for them. Okay. So – I didn't get paid. I just worked there for free just to help them out. Mm -hmm. And so every time I would work there, there would always be some – because it was off this place in Sacramento uh, off of Mac Road, and Mac Road was pretty ghetto. Okay. And this person comes in, orders a whole like popcorn shrimp, french fries, drink the whole thing, and hush puppies, right? I kid you fucking not. This guy ate everything. Mm -hmm. And he goes, this shit was disgusting. I want my money back. Ah. And then I looked at I was like, cool, where's the food? He goes, I ate it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, <laughs> and I remember I'm like super young and my brain fried because I couldn't <laughs> compute what was going on. And I was like, and I remember I just stopped and I was quiet. He goes, give me my money back. I'm like, you, you ate it. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. He goes, yeah, it was disgusting. I'm like, I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. And I, I just remember I'm young. I'm like 16. Yeah. And my brain just like stopped because <laughs> I couldn't understand how fucking stupid somebody could Didn't be. make sense. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously the owners came back and they dealt with it. They're like, he's trying to fucking play you right now. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I just didn't understand what to do. He goes, he's trying to get a free meal. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. So what do I do? He goes, just fucking give it to him. Just like, let it go. Because like, why sit here and argue with this guy? He ate the whole thing. CPK, uh, and I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. CBK employees, but I, when I was working there, I do believe they had a policy where it's like, so every pizza is um, 10 inches, six slices, good enough for one hungry person, okay? But if the person has eaten more than two slices, they're no longer allowed to be like, I, I don't like this. Yeah, you can get it from the first bite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That makes no sense. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a whole thing. A Chris Rock, he also, he, he took that, that character he did and he used to do this thing on a Living Color that used to crack me up. It was the same shit where it, Specifically, I remember this joke because he used to make me laugh, even, even as a little kid, where he's like, you know, how much for this soda? And he was like, a dollar. He's like, okay, well, how much for the diet soda? And he was like, a dollar. He's like, wait, 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 how is it the same? How This one has no sugar. How are you going to charge me the same? And he'd be like, how about I give you 75 cents? You let me suck the bubbles out. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but that's, it's an exaggeration of fucking reality. But yeah. 
I, I definitely started to understand, like, when you guys start to, like, travel and you just talk to more people, a lot of the stuff that I used to think was, like, oh, this is impossible in writing. And then and I grow up, I'm like, wait, that's a real fucking person. Yeah, man. Like, when people write this stuff, it's from, like, personal experiences that they've seen before or some semblance of it. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I was in Japan and, you know, I watch a lot of anime and you'll see – characters of anime in real life mm. and i'm like that's a real fucking person because i always thought they're exaggerating this shit mm. and obviously there's a lot that there is but like for example like mary and i were cracking up because we were in a taxi cab and there was this uh older gentleman who was our taxi driver and he laughed and spoke like taxi drivers in animes mm. and i was like holy shit this is a real person mm. blew my fucking mind and i couldn't stop staring at him i'm like dude, how the fuck are you real dude you're a real fucking person <laughs> That's how he would laugh. <laughs> Fucking like spit bouncing out yeah. of his mouth and shit. He was cracking up because Mariel confused the word in Japanese. Basically, she was saying the street name, but it also sounded like prison. Ah. So when she was telling him, she, he was like, basically, she was saying like, can you take me to prison? Hilarious. And yeah. then he looked at uh, me and her. He goes, eh? <laughs> and he goes like this. And I'm like, is he telling us we can't come in? He's like, no. He, so he was doing handcuffs. Oh. He was like, why do you want to go to prison? And we're like, we don't want to go to prison. And he's like. What? That's funny. Yeah, so he thought he wanted she was he was asking us to take us to jail. Wow. Yeah, it was so fucking funny. How how good is Mario's Japanese? So she speaks with a different dialect. So Kyoto oh, man. Okay. Um when Joe first heard her speak Japanese, because uh uh Joe speaks uh Tokyo Ben, so it was oh. like the typical one that everybody hears. Oh. So he thought that uh, her Japanese was terrible. Mm. But it was just because she was speaking like a like a little different uh, dialect. And where did she learn hers from? Uh, she lived in Kyoto for I think about a year. Oh, or so. Kyoto man is from Kyoto. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so she her Japanese is it's actually not. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't really speak Japanese, right? But other people say it's pretty damn decent. Like it's better than people who grew up in America and spoke Japanese with with their parents. All right, right. So like, if I were to compare it, like her Japanese is probably equivalent to my Korean mm -hmm. and her Korean is really, really fluent. Like when she was oh, in shit. Korea, a lot of people couldn't even, didn't even know that she was from the States. Mm. That's how good her fucking Korean is. I see. Mine on the other hand, they looked at me like I was like a full blown idiot. Damn, isn't that crazy? I, that's why I wish I was white <laughs> or I was like black or Mexican. Cause, Cause then you speak a little Korean, they'd be like, whoa. They would be impressed. Yeah. Like, whoa. <laughs> but over here, they're just like, Ugh, this guy doesn't even know his language. <laughs> it's wild, man. Like, I thought my Thai was straight, and then you go to Thailand, and then they'll, and then I remember being like 14, speaking Thai, and then they look at my mom and be like, oh, he has an accent, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm right here. <laughs> Asian people are hella harsh to you when you don't speak the, the native language. Yeah. I, I don't know what that's about. Well, I mean, I guess you could say the same, like, out here, even, you know, you have a lot of people that just, will speak really fluent English, but because they have an accent, they're like, oh, people look at me like I'm dumb. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Even though they're saying all the words correctly, but because they have the accent, people tend to look at them like, mm, you're dumb. I, I definitely have seen that where like they'll speak broken English back to them. Yeah. And it's like, listen, they can't speak it, but they can understand it. Yeah. You, to, you like uh, this? <laughs> or you like uh, that? <laughs> it's like, they're just like, I don't understand you at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't. I never do that. I just speak to them straight. I. Uh, they say that you shouldn't baby talk your babies too much because oh. they'll speak like they won't pick up the actual words as fast. You know, because if you're constantly like that's all they hear, right? So, if, so they say you should talk to your babies like they're fucking regular ass people. Pick up your shit, motherfucker. <laughs> Like that. Oh, okay. And then they'll be like, okay, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Step outside, bitch. <laughs> so you never baby talk? I do sometimes because especially, well. It's fun. It's it's cute, right? But um, once I heard that, um, I do try to just, just talk, speak regularly to Veda, especially now, bro. Like she absorbs and repeats everything, uh, like everything. I know. Once the kids hit two. I have to be very conscious mm -hmm. about not saying crazy stuff around them. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm just like, because uh, it's weird. It's, it, I, I used to be so good at it. But nowadays, a lot of my friends don't care. They just curse in front of their kids. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I always get like caught up. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you this one shit. I got fucking mad at uh, somebody that I knew mm -hmm. because this is, this is what's dumb, right? And mm -hmm. then one of my friends had to step in and kind of scold her mm -hmm. because – she doesn't like it when people curse around her kids, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the dumb part about that shit. You brought your kid 
to a birthday party with alcohol and you're at a barbecue function and you brought your kid around and then now you want 30 people at the party to watch what they say, mm, mm, mm. like she couldn't compute or understand that you're the one who's at fault. Yeah. You're the terrible mother that brought your kid around a bunch of drunk people. Dang. And so like I was sitting there, we were telling the story of Joy. She goes, she goes, can you stop cursing in front of my fucking kid? And after she just said fuck in front of her kid. Mm. And I looked at her and I was like, do you know where you're at? Mm -hmm. And then he, my buddy steps in. He goes, hey, I, 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 I want to step in here. He's like, actually, you're wrong. Yeah. And I was like, how are you going to tell all 30 people to stop, to stop what they're doing at an adult function because you decided to bring your kid around? Mm -hmm. Like, how the fuck? And I couldn't. I was like, are you dumb? Mm -hmm. Like, you're the bad parent right now. Yeah. Because you wanted to come to the party. You said, fuck it. I'm going to bring my kid here in front of with everybody who drinks. Mm -hmm. It's like, aren't you the bad person? I'm the normal one. It's like taking your kid to an R-rated movie and being mad that she's hearing curse words, you know? I didn't get it. And I just remember. And then she still didn't understand. She goes, well, why can't you guys just, like, stop cursing? It's like, <laughs> what are you talking about yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah. Everybody's drunk here. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, everybody. Everybody trying to fucking baby shark. <laughs> and then stop drinking. What she should have did is got her baby drunk. I tried, man. <laughs> I gave the little baby whiskey, started throwing up gang signs and shit. <laughs> Bruh, let me tell you, when we're talking about Vader repeating shit, so the other day, um, so we call, you know, like, she calls her 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 cooch her chocha because I'll be like, oh hi, you know, like blah blah blah. I gotta, you know, gotta, you know, when the when the bath, gotta clean your chocha, clean your legs, whatever, right? So the other day, I like, I guess I carried her in a way, like I had my hand, like something like hurt her, right? She mm -hmm. was like, she was like, ouch, my chocha. I was like, oh my bad, change my arms up, right? So, the, so then we get in the house, and she's like, she's like, daddy, she's like, daddy, touch my chocha, and it hurts. I was like, beta. Don't Beta, say that. Don't. Let's not repeat that. Please. Oh my god! <laughs> and then she said it again later. She's like, "My daddy touched your chocha. It hurts." I was like, "No, man, no, don't say that. You gotta, you gotta. We, let's not. Let's not say that." <laughs> Dude, I just saw your life flash before your eyes right now. I'm my ass is sweating. Like that's not. I didn't touch it. <laughs> That is the, my worst nightmare. <laughs> I was like, let's let's not, man. Let's not say that. Okay? But it's true. It's like, no, it is, but it's not. <laughs> All right? Because people are going to, okay, I get it. No, don't, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's fucking scary as shit. Yeah, but she she's talking, you know, she's she's like, it's a trip, bro. Like, and we've talked about this before, before on the podcast, but Veda, uh, Veda can fucking speak, dude. Yeah, I know. Like, she knows what the fuck she's talking about, and she's saying, like, full-ass, clear-ass sentences. It's crazy. She's pretty advanced though, like for her age. Yeah, you uh, you you said that, and yeah. I and I and I have I don't know what to how to gauge, but I guess you've been around more babies than me. Yeah, I mean I've I've okay that could come off wrong. I'm not kicking it with babies all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I was a youth minister, mm -hmm. so uh, at a small church you kind of fill in a lot of positions, right? So when I did youth ministry with like the teens, every now and then, I don't know, let's say the other person wasn't there and I had to cover for them, so, you know, for like daycare stuff or whatever. So for three or four years, you're just like watching a bunch of Little Mermaid shit, you're watching other kids and you're watching other kids develop a lot. And now a lot of my friends' kids are the same age as Veda. Yeah. And Veda is, speaking wise, way ahead of them. Yeah. And it's kind of trippy. It's it a little, is. It's a little weird, you it know is. what I mean? Like she's saying full ass things where other kids are kind of like, Mama is like, I want, I want this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we're good. and then mumble, mumble, and then a word is said, but Veda's over here like, did you do your quarterly taxes? <laughs> In that voice, oh, did you do your quarterly taxes, Dad? <laughs> dad, uh, tax season's coming up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dad, Dad, you know, you, you know, you can write this off. This is a, this is this is a. Uh, I don't even know any tax shit. I'm trying to make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> this global warming's a little crazy, huh? Your 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 deductible your deductibles are here, Dad. Um, <laughs> dad, technically, my baby bottles are deductibles as long as you put it in the videos. <laughs> it's made for entertainment and business purposes. <laughs> I'm like, dude, she's advanced. Yeah, man, it's it's a fucking trip, dog. It's it's crazy. Um, in Hawaii, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, can somebody explain this to me in Hawaii? How come Hawaii in Hawaii? Like, I've seen this every time at a beach. How come y'all just be letting your kids just run around naked out in public? Oh, it's it's Hawaii, dude. Yeah, but it's such a touristy area, mm. so it's like I've never seen so many naked babies out <laughs> in public, and I'm like, hey, yo, man, there's perverts out here, dog. Cover yeah. that baby up, and I'm just kind of like. I don't know. I feel uncomfortable. I feel it. I think that's like, you know, the internet, you've like read about so many creepy ass fucking people. <laughs> it's like, dude, just put a little 
towel around them or something. Did I tell you about when I went to the nude, nude beach in Hawaii? I was like talking to Chia. We went to Maui once and I was like, yo, let's go to this nude beach, right? And in my head, I'm like, yo, I'm about to be frolicking with my dick swinging because like it'll be so fun, right? It's a nude beach. Fuck it, right? And not going to lie, bro, once we got there, I was shy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, you just got a little grape leaf. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was about to be hyped to just have my dick out at the beach. But, man, once you're there, you're like, and also I got a little paranoid because I'm like, what if there's like a fan with like taking pictures, binoculars, whatever. Um, so, and, you know, of course, it's just a lot of like old white dudes with their dicks out walking around, you know. But, but what I did do at one point, <laughs> and there's a, a vlog of this too, is like, I just took my my swim trunks off, ran into the ocean, dived in real quick, and then ran back, you know? Then I put my trunks back on. But I just needed to dive into the ocean naked once. I can do that only if I'm buff. Because <laughs> if somebody's like, damn, that package is small, at least the muscles are fucking <laughs> popping. You can't be fucking... <clears throat> how, no, how cold is the water? You don't know. Well, I, you know, I fluffed myself for 15 minutes, lightly stroked my dick Very for nice. 15 minutes before running in there. Had to make sure I was at least 45% engorged. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm surprised Chia would be, was down for that. I mean, we're at a nude beach. Fuck it. She didn't, I mean, she wasn't naked. She didn't take her top off. And like, I, I really thought she was at least going to like topless tan for a little bit. But she was like, mm, nah, I'm good. That sounds more like to you. <laughs> she goes, I won't yuck your yum, but mm -hmm. you go do your thing. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of like just a private little beach. So that's cool. Um, so Chia was just tanning, chilling, but uh, she did not have her titties out, which I thought would have been cool. But uh, did you hear about the people who who like it's called perennial? They, they fucking sunbathe their asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm. <laughs> It's, like, it's, like this. it's literally this. And they what? And they they literally get sun on their asshole. Like this. Why would you do that when I feel like your asshole is already darker than the rest of your body? <laughs> it's already darker. Yo, so apparently it was like a Hollywood type of thing, huh? So I forgot who was a huge proponent of it. Yeah, but they were talking about all the beneficial things of getting sun on it or whatever, whatnot. And then a doctor came out. They're like. Do you have any idea, like, the way the body is built for the reason that it is? Mm. That area is never supposed to see daylight. You can fuck up your skin there oh. by getting by burning it. Like, it's not supposed to have sun. Are you out of your fucking mind? Interesting. But there was a period where people were doing, per, like, it was called perennial tanning or sunning. Wow, you're flexible, dog. Hey, man, I work on it. <laughs> You know what it looks like? <laughs> it looks like you're a puppet. And then they just, <laughs> it looks like you're a Kirby does a beagle. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, Shardy. <laughs> and, <laughs> I love that account so much. And you know what threw me off recently? He put up a very serious post about his father who, have, who has cancer. He, oh, yes. And it threw me off. Because I'm so used to him just, you know, yeah. you know Kirby's dick. Yeah, yeah. And that watching that, I kind of laughed because I was like, dog, this is so... <laughs> Random. And all the comments are, my bad, Shotty. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad has cancer? My bad, Shotty. It's like, come on, y'all. Give us your homes up, love. Donate some money. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I feel like your booty hole skin is like the same color as like your nipple skin or, you know, whatever. It's just, it's darker. You it's know? just supposed to be a little darker. You yeah. Know? A lot of poop passes through it. Is it, isn't it like the color of your lips is like the color of your nipples? People say some shit like that. Have you ever seen a bleached asshole like in person? Not in person, no. I have. Really? Very interesting. Huh. I was like, oh, look, it's the same color all around. Wow. Blew my mind. Whoa. She had the, um, she got it done during, uh, when she got uh, laser removal too. Oh. So when she got laser removal, she also did that as well. Interesting. But that was the first time I saw a bleached asshole. It was a little weird. Yeah, I guess you kind of expect it to be a little darker. At yeah, I, I expect like a gradient. That was extremely, it was just the same color. And then the hole. And then the hole. Huh. I don't think guys care about shit like that. No, not really. Um, I, well, I, I mean, I do, I'll say this. Um, as I got older, I, I grew to appreciate a pretty asshole. You mm -hmm. know, I think back in the day, I was like, who cares about assholes? You know, that's, that's, that's what poop comes out of there. And then I think as time went on, I was like, Oh, this is a really, this is a nice butthole. Is it? <laughs> Boop. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. 
Hey, you get pink eye. <laughs> well, guys, <laughs> thank you for watching another episode of Toast Behind the Foods. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, all that bullshit. <laughs> I'm Tim Jonathan Roxy. And I'm David. <laughs> Yo, it's the dudes behind the foods.